Okay, everyone, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here at Fenway Park. Earlier today, the Boston Red Sox announced the hiring of Haim Bloom as Chief Baseball Officer. We are so pleased to introduce Haim today and welcome him to the Red Sox organization. At this time, I would like to introduce the table, the head table, beginning on the far left, on my far left, excuse me, Principal Owner John Henry, Chairman Tom Werner, Red Sox President and CEO Sam Kennedy, and of course, Haim Bloom. In a few moments, you're going to have the opportunity to ask questions of everyone seated up here, but we are going to begin first with some opening remarks, and with that, I believe we are going to start with Tom. Tom? Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, today is an exciting day for the Boston Red Sox, and uh, we'd like to start by thanking Stu Sternberg, Matt Silverman, Eric Neander, and the entire Tampa Bay Rays organization for affording us the ability to speak with Haim. We have great respect for the Rays, and we appreciate their flexibility. A special thanks, too, to Commissioner Manfred, Dan Halem, and Morgan Sword at MLB for their guidance throughout our exhaustive search. And to Brian O'Halloran, Eddie Romero, Zach Scott, and Raquel Ferreira, we thank you for your leadership throughout this transition, for being so in sync with one another and the needs of our organization, and for never missing a beat. Over the past eight weeks, we've identified that while we have incredible strengths and skills within our organization, we could benefit from adding new ideas and a perspective to the baseball operations department. We compiled a list of about 20 candidates that were reviewed and scrutinized internally, and in the end, it was only one we felt compelled to ask permission to interview, and that candidate was Haim Bloom. Haim's experience with the Rays allowed him to touch, understand, and lead every aspect of a major league team's baseball operation, from setting a vision and structure for player development to the seamless integration of analytics into game management. 
and at the age of 36, Haim has developed a well-respected reputation across the league and is known by his colleagues as someone who is creative, thorough, and collaborative. Sam? Thanks, Tom. Um, I'd also just like to echo uh, our thanks to Rock, Eddie, BOH, and Zach, who um, I've had the privilege of working with for the last 18 years, who did just an incredible job, as Tom mentioned. So thanks to those guys. Also, happy birthday to Raquel and, and BOH. Um, I also want to thank Red Sox executives David Beeston and Samantha Barkowski, who worked tirelessly in terms of helping us prepare our research materials as we were uh, zeroing in on potential candidates. Um, it is a great day for the Red Sox, as Tom uh, pointed out. Um, we consulted uh, with a lot of people uh, in the industry uh, about potential people from outside the organization once we started to look outside. Uh, we consulted with players, coaches, executives, general managers, and there was one consistent uh, refrain that kept coming back about Haim. And that is this, that he enjoys a universal reputation for creativity, his intellect, humility, leadership abilities, and perhaps most importantly to us, a sense of humor. In addition to all these qualities, uh, I know that I'm most excited to partner with Haim because he prioritizes people and relationships above all else. From a baseball perspective, he has demonstrated the ability to take a comprehensive approach to building a successful team at the major league level, and he understands what Red Sox fans want and what Red Sox fans deserve, and that is a sustainable baseball operation throughout the entire organization, which we hope will deliver more and more October baseball at Fenway. So on behalf of uh, John and Tom, I want to welcome uh, Haim and his wife, Aliza, who's joining us today, and his sister, Dahlia. Uh, our strategic advantage in the recruitment process is that they happen to be from Lexington, Massachusetts. So to Aliza and Dahlia and your extended families, welcome to Red Sox Nation. Uh, and on behalf of my colleagues, the men and women of the front office, uh, Haim, we're extremely excited to have you here. Congratulations and good luck. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank John Henry, Tom Warner, and Sam Kennedy for this wonderful opportunity and for their faith in what our baseball operations department can accomplish together. Thank you also to Raquel Ferreira, Brian O'Halloran, Eddie Romero, and Zach Scott. How capably they steered the ship over the last two months is a testament to the strength of our staff as a whole. Before joining the Red Sox, I already regarded them highly, and now I do even more. They are four of the most talented executives in the game of baseball, and I'm excited that I get to work with them. Thank you, Alex Cora, for how you have welcomed me to the Red Sox. I have great respect for your talents as a manager, and I'm looking forward to our relationship. I also want to thank Stu Sternberg and his partners and all of my former teammates over the years with the Tampa Bay Rays. For 15 years, they challenged me, supported me, and made me better, and I would not be here without them. I will always be proud of what we did together. Finally, thank you to my family, to my parents and brother, and especially to my wife, Eliza, and our two boys. Your support means everything. I love you. Let me say a few words about what we're here to accomplish. To build as strong an organization as possible in all aspects, so that we can have sustained, long-term success and compete for championships year in and year out. All successful organizations in this game are committed to a strong foundation. That means not only the depth of our 40-man roster or our minor league system, but the processes, programs, and people that we have in every aspect of baseball operations. The game is changing faster than ever before and a mindset of constant improvement, of innovating, of learning and asking questions will allow us to be leaders in every area that can impact the success of our on-field product. The backbone of our department will always be our people, our staff and players. 
How we collaborate, how openly and honestly we communicate will determine how much we can accomplish. Having competed against them for 15 years, I know how strong this baseball operations staff is. I think the world of them and look forward to building relationships throughout the department. We will have each other's backs, and what we do, we will do together. We have one other personnel announcement to make today, and that is the promotion of Brian O'Halloran to general manager. I have known BOH a long time, though of course not as well as all of you. As an adversary, I always respected how he handled himself. He is smart, thorough, calm, and capable. But if you think the people in this room are biased, go find out what his counterparts think of him. He is without question among the most respected and trustworthy executives in the game today. Our conversations over the last week have only bolstered my already high opinion of him. He leads selflessly and without ego, and the good of the Red Sox is his highest priority. In that regard and so many others, he is a model for everyone here. That I can now work closely with him is a privilege. I'm excited for our partnership. Congratulations, BOH. And finally, to our fans in Red Sox Nation. The bond between this organization and its fan base is unlike anything else in sports. I know how passionate you are, and I know how important this team is to you, and I don't take that lightly. My teammates and I will work together and do everything we can to make you proud, on and off the field. I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom, Sam, and Haim. At this point, we can proceed with questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We do have three microphones, one on either end and then one in the middle aisle. And please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. And I believe we can start right in the middle here, in the back. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm John Miller, WBZ Radio. Um, what are you, what's the some of your priorities on, on remodeling this team? And what, what's your thoughts on my Martinez and Betts. You know, just having gotten here, there's uh, obviously I come in with, with some information, having competed against this team for a long time. Uh, there's a lot I don't know, and uh, there's a lot that I'm still learning, and I'm eager to get together with our group a little bit more uh, and, to, and to learn a, a lot about uh, what I don't know coming in. Uh, I would say generally, you know, our top priority is going to be that uh, sustainability and competitiveness over the long term. And that could take many forms, but that's really going to be uh, the top priority as we think about uh, moves. Uh, with respect to those two guys, uh, again, I'm just coming in here and there's, there's a lot that I don't know. Um, and looking forward to uh, building relationships with them and uh, learning a little bit more uh, about them from everybody here. Okay, on the right here. Hi. Uh, Steve Buckley from The Athletic. Welcome to Boston. Thank you. You mentioned Red Sox Nation and fans and expectations and so forth. Uh, so can you speak to that in return to the Mookie Betts question? That's obviously something Red Sox fans are going to want to know a lot about. So my question to you is, did that come up during the interview process? Uh, well, to the first part of that, to the expectations, you know, I know um, how high the expectations are here. Uh, that's not just uh, Red Sox Nation, that's, that's our ownership as well. Uh, and my expectations are high, and I know the expectations of the baseball operations staff are high. That's a good thing. We should have high expectations. That's just going to drive us uh, further to meet them. Uh, if, you know, watching baseball today and seeing how high the bar is to, to win championships wasn't already enough of a motivator, then, uh, you know, those expectations should just drive that higher. Uh, with respect to Mookie, you know, without getting into too much detail, there was a wide variety of things that, that we discussed uh, during the interview process. Um, again, I'm still trying to learn, and there's a lot of things I don't know about, you know, potential options for the direction of the roster. So it would be premature of me to say anything other than that we're going to look thoroughly, uh, you know, at all of our options. One, just one follow-up. Was, was Mookie included in the wide variety of – Things that came up during the interview process. We did discuss them a little, yeah. Okay, moving right uh, on the right corner here. 
Uh, you had a coach in the dugout this year with the Rays, uh, uh, Jonathan Ehrlichman, who had not played baseball since he was in T-ball at the age of five. Uh, how did that work out, and can you see yourself ever doing that here at a, a place with the tradition the Red Sox have? Uh, well, yeah, he was on the coaching staff. He wasn't uh, one of our coaches in the dugout, but... Uh, you know, it was it was great. I you know I commend uh, Kevin Cash for uh, you know wanting to do that and, and and being open to that. But I think every situation is unique. I don't think it would be fair for me to say, you know, we did this with the Rays, therefore we must do it with the Red Sox. I think you know the the thing that we tried to do there was to bring the right solution and the, the right uh, answer to every situation. And you know that's the approach that I'm coming in here with. Okay, right down here, second row, Dan, right here, coming on. Go ahead, Grub. Matt, go ahead. You're, you're coming from an organization that's produced a lot of, of pitching, homegrown. This is an organization that has had struggles with that. How much is that, um, is that critical to creating sustainability? And do you have kind of a plan in mind that, that, to put that together here? Yeah, it's really hard to build a sustainable winning operation without a strong farm system over time. Um, that can obviously take many forms, and you, it's not just pitching. You need uh, all sorts of talented players to compete for a championship. Um, you know, need, uh, you know, needless to say, that's going to be you know, the strength of our farm system going forward will be a, a huge emphasis, as it has been here in the past. You know, I hope there, that there are some ideas and thoughts that I can contribute to that conversation that I know is already ongoing. I also know that a lot of what we accomplished in Tampa Bay was due to having great people and putting those people in a position to succeed uh, by empowering them and also challenging them. And, uh, you know, that's something that I think can, can work anywhere. Okay, Dan right here in the middle. Hi, I'm uh, Dan Roach from WBZ. Uh, welcome. Uh, just a thought on what you did in Tampa Bay. You guys were able to accomplish a lot on a relatively low payroll. How much did this job excite you about the fact that you have some ability to go spend money, not just on the major league level, but all the way from top to bottom in the organization? It's obviously great to have resources, but uh, for me, uh, you know, there's so, there's so much beyond that that makes this opportunity exciting, and I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, the talent within the organization, not just on the field, but also, you know, on our staff. And, and of course, uh, you know, the way that this community, this region, you know, supports this team. I think, uh, you know, every team has, uh, you know, unique strengths and unique challenges. I think it really comes down to your people. And uh, that's one of the most exciting things about this opportunity. Um, a f just a follow-up to, to John, Tom, and Sam. When did you know that – how long did it take you to know that Haim was the, the, the guy that you, you wanted? Well, I, I would just say that in, in our extensive conversations with Haim, he really ticked every box that we were hoping he would uh, check out. I and mean, he's thoughtful, uh, innovative. Uh, collaborative. Uh, every every uh, person we talked to within other teams in baseball had just the highest regard for Haim, and so uh, we were uh, so pleased that our in-person interviews matched our uh, our expectations. Okay, on the left and back here. Hey, hi, I'm Tom Lydon from Boston 25 News. When, c welcome, first of all. Thank you. When you look at the relatively abrupt ends of the tenure of Theo, of Ben, and most recently of Dave, what types of questions does that make you ask from your end on the interview cycle, and what sort of answers did you get? Because we're all thinking, why are these tenures come to such an abrupt end? Yeah, I, I understand the question, but you know, for me, a lot of this, it's, it's all about looking forward and looking at what we have in front of us. And I would say that the, the gentlemen up here with me you know, throughout the process were um, aligned and they were also very open uh, about whatever questions I might have had and the best thing about this was knowing that uh, we all shared the same vision for you know, how to go forward and for the attributes that we need to go forward and uh, you know win sustainably here. Okay, back in the middle there. Hi, I'm, hi. it's Alex Spear with the Boston Globe. Um, just curious about your vision of how you of what you see as kind of the best way to structure a front office in how having Brian as a, uh, as a general manager fits into that model of, um, I presume you've used the word collaboration 
uh, a number of times so far into, into that structure? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think that there's one best way that will fit uh, every organization. I think what's really important, especially in an organization with such talented people in the front office as this one, to come in and make sure you've got your arms around the situation as it is. Um, you know, one thing uh, that did stand out, and, you know, obviously I've had, I've had experience with collaborative leadership uh, with the Rays, um, was, you know, how productive that would be. But it really was not a question of imposing a model on the group as much as trying, um, you know, with that um, to put us in the best position to succeed. I, I think, like I said, you know, I'm just getting to know them a little better, but I think the, the group here is wonderful. And however we look at that going forward, it's going to be with the mindset of putting everybody in position to have the maximum positive impact on the organization. Okay, Sean right here in the middle. I'm Sean McAdam, Boston Sports Journal. Um, as you know, it's a goal, though not a mandate, to reduce payroll here. Um, how daunting a prospect is that when you look at payroll obligations and the need to cut 15% or so to try to reach that goal? And how much did you discuss with ownership during the interview process, how you might achieve that? Well, fortunately, I don't think that, uh, you know, I think everybody agreed it, to get into too many specifics without, again, really knowing what all the options are uh, to try to, you know, achieve our objectives. I think it, it probably would not have been very worthwhile without having the full picture. You know, there, that full picture, I think, is something that as we get it, we'll be able to figure out the best way to go out and achieve those objectives. Um, but as with anything, I think our job is to try to create as many options as we can to accomplish our goals. Okay, Jen on the left in the middle. Uh, Jen McCaff with The Athletic. Uh, Sam, I guess this is probably the best question for, for you. Just in terms of, um, you guys mentioned interview or compiling 20, 20 candidates and interviewing only one in Haim. What, um, I guess, what was that process like? And, um, you know, obviously it was very quiet over the past couple months of h how long did this take and when, when I guess, did you um, decide to interview Hyman and, and go from there? Yeah, so the, um, the, the process, I think everyone um, remembers when um, we made the uh, decision to part ways with Dave, we immediately uh, installed Rock and Eddie and BOH and Zach, who, again, did just a, a tremendous job. That gave us an opportunity to get a jump start on the off season and position us for, for 2020. And over four to six week period, uh, led by uh, John and Tom, um, we had the opportunity to evaluate the department critically to sort of identify strengths, areas for improvement. Um, and we came to the conclusion that we may benefit uh, the Red Sox may benefit from adding uh, external uh, voice or, or resource. Um, and so it was a bit of a, a high risk, a high reward strategy um, in that the rules of Major League Baseball are such that you need, you're required to get permission to speak to uh, other clubs. And so instead of uh, just casting a wide net and going out and asking permission on eight to ten people, we really took the time, all of us did, to read, do research, examine what the options might be, um, identify a candidate who has a wife from the area. Um, and all of those roads from conversations with people throughout the game led uh, the three of us to believe um, that Hyam would be the absolute ideal choice to come in and partner with uh, the front office and be an incredible teammate uh, with Eddie and Raquel and BOH and Zach. So we identified him. Um, John uh, Henry called Stu Sternberg, asked for permission um, a week ago Friday, uh, and the process um, began from there. Okay, we go to Tom in the middle left here. I'm Tom Karen Nesson. Um, probably more than at any point in the history of this game, front offices and, and managers, coaches, on-field staff have to collaborate, have to work together. You've had conversations with Alex, I'm sure. Can you talk about the early forming of that relationship and what you expect to get out of it going forward? We've only had a few conversations so far, but they've been great. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, over the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of Alex's work firsthand. Um, have a ton of respect for him. Uh, you know, some of the, the folks that I work with, 
uh, in Tampa Bay on, on the coaching staff there, you know, played with Alex, know him very well. So he came highly recommended as it is. And to me, you know, this isn't something you can, you know, snap your fingers and, and just have. It's not something you can fake. You build a relationship through, through honest engagement. And, you know, so far that's what we've had, and I know we're going to have a lot more of it. Well, quick follow-up on that. Just do you come into this with sort of what that relationship needs to be between the front office and the manager, or is that something you expect to grow a little more organically based on who you are, who he is, and what's here? The latter. I think it'll grow organically. I think as long as everybody's coming to this with a collaborative mindset, as long as everybody's coming to this recognizing that none of us has all the answers, we're going to be best if we can challenge each other, learn from each other, keep questioning what we think we know, uh, and continue searching for knowledge and searching for answers, if we all take that mindset, which I'm confident we all will, then, then we're going to be all right. Okay, straight back in the middle. Thanks very much, Hi, I'm, uh, Craig Limold from WGBH. Uh, you've been in baseball for a long time, and yet at the same time you are coming to this position at a, at a relatively young age, right? So I was just wondering about your own reflections on that, as well as perhaps uh, uh, your thoughts about any comparisons with earlier uh, young uh, front office people in this clubhouse. Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Um, yeah, I, I have been very fortunate with my experiences in baseball. I was able to get, uh, you know, a foothold in this game at a very young age, and so I've been able to compile a, you know, a good experience here. At still, I appreciate the compliment that you still consider me to be at a uh, relatively young age. Um, th there are an inc increasing number of days where it doesn't feel like that. Um, one of the great things about my upbringing in this game, aside from, you know, as was alluded to, that I've been fortunate enough to be around just about every aspect of baseball operations, is that I've also been able to learn from a lot of different people of different backgrounds, different ages, um, you know, different people in, from all, you know, walks of this game who have been mentors to me. Um, and it, it really brought to light that I think, you know, you, as long as you have respect for everybody else's experiences, um, you can be proud of your own experiences, but also learn from everybody. And that's, that's the attitude that I've, I've tried to take. And, you know, I think you, you come into this chair, any chair, uh, you, you're not trying to be anybody else. You're just trying to be who you are and, and be the best version of yourself. Okay, Tara in the back right there. Hi, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Um, so much of it seems the conversation around baseball these days is sort of the game's identity itself, where it's going, where it's been, old school versus new school, that kind of thinking. I would just love to hear sort of your picture view of the game and maybe how you sort of, what you love about it, if there is such things to share, just kind of what attracted you to the game itself. That, that's a good question. I, mean, I, I obviously <laughs> love baseball. I've, Loved it uh, as long as I can remember. Uh, there's so many different things to love about it. I think one of the great things about this game is that anybody can connect to it. There, there are so many different ways to connect. Now, does that mean that we're doing everything perfectly as a sport? You know, of course not. But and we, we, we should always try to improve. But there, there's so many things to love. Uh, you know, from the history to the, the wonderful things that are going on the field now, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about it. Okay, the front right here, Chris. Yeah, oh. There we go. Chris Cotillo from Mass Live. This is more for Sam, but obviously this is a new title that you guys came up with, Chief Baseball Officer. What went into that specifically and um, why you decided to go that route? Well, we, we've um, tried to keep up with the change, uh, changing nature of the structure of baseball operations departments. Um, and so that was part of our examination of the landscape. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we value uh, the collaboration and, and brain power uh, and the institutional knowledge that uh, our incredible uh, team of existing baseball operations folks have uh, here at the Red Sox. So uh, the title uh, and Brian's uh, new title seem to be uh, a good fit as we all uh, go forward together. Okay, Pete, right in the middle. Uh, Peter Abraham from the Globe. I guess for either John or Tom, uh, is it unusual uh, for a a role of this importance to interview only one person in, in your experience? I think it, uh, I'd say I think it is unusual. Um, this is a big job and it's, it's one of the reasons that we came up with the titles that we came up with from the last question. This uh, Running a major league organization, especially one as large and complex as the Red Sox organization, it's obviously the work of more than one person. So um, 
uh, in this case, I think we were so uh, enamored with the job that the, the, our, the four people in our le leadership group were doing that we thought uh, the, the best thing we can do is find the candidate who supplements them or and can lead uh, who is who we feel it has the same sort of mindset that they do and um, and I think that's what we did so once one going in uh, we felt he was the right candidate before we met with him during the two days that we met uh, long two days for, for especially for him um, he met with everyone and we I think all of us came away, I know all of us came away thinking this is the right fit for this organization given the strength of the existing organization. Um, Heim was the right man for the job. Um, a lot of times when uh, somebody comes in to run baseball operations for a team, it's because the team has failed and there's a lot of changes that need to be made. You're coming in, there's a manager that they've said they want to keep, they have four executives that they've said they want to keep. Um, how much of a challenge does that present to you that it's different than it normally would be? You need to kind of get to know them as opposed to somebody coming in and kind of cleaning the slate. Yeah, I think it's an asset. You know, we're, we're talking about some really wonderful and capable people here. I, I, I think, you know, they're all tremendous assets. I think that's going to, you know, make this job, you know, a, a whole heck of a lot more pleasurable, and it's, it's really going to enable us to accomplish a lot together. Okay, Chad right here in the middle. Hi, I'm Chad Jennings from The Athletic. I'm before you came in, this organization made some significant moves, like coaching and things. I wonder what you've thought of those changes and the direction the team was already heading. And maybe along a similar line, you're joining a, a baseball operations department that has a lot of people who have been here for a very long time. I wonder how do you go about sort of putting yourself into that group and do you expect to make any changes within that? And I as I've said, I have a lot of respect for these folks and really admired the way that they went about it during that time, you know, understanding that it is a little bit of a difficult time to be able to make some moves. And, you know, the, the off season is, it's finite and a lot of things can get crammed into a short period of time if you don't get out in front of it. The fact that they were able to do that uh, it was really impressive to me. Obviously, there's a lot about what went into those moves, why they were done that I don't yet know. I'm looking forward to asking a lot of questions. I think my my approach is just going to be to come in here and, 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 learn, and learn why. I think I'm going to learn from them just as much as I hope they'll learn from me and that we'll figure out together how we can improve. Okay, Matt in the middle to the right there. John, there's been a lot of talk about sustainability. It, how important is it that this is a longer relationship, that this, is, that this works out for a period of time to, to, to have some sustainability inside your front office as well? I think we've had tremendous sustainability. Are you talking about the turnover? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been uh, an owner for 21 years, and in that time I've had three and now four general managers. So I, I really don't agree with the narrative that, that we have an issue there. Um, we did, we have made changes when we thought they were appropriate. Uh, we've been successful over a long period of time, and uh, but what we would like to see, and and you always want to see in a in an organization is is uh, uh, stability, and it, you know I think in general we've had that. Yes, we made a change because we, uh, as a group, uh, this ownership group, and some below the ownership group. Uh, came to a decision we need, needed to make a change, and we did. Okay, Tom, in the front right here. I'm Tom Keegan of the Boston Herald. Uh, you have a reputation for being um, more transparent than many in baseball, so thank you for that and keep it up. Uh, but I think many in baseball are all but writing out the manager's lineup card but are afraid to admit it. They, they must think there's something wrong with that. Do you think there's anything wrong with handing the baseball the, with the manager the, the lineup? And, and if you do do that, will you be forthcoming about it? If we did that, we'd be forthcoming about it, but I don't anticipate doing that because that to me is not collaborative. 
I think you know a lot of really good organizations, in, including the one that I just came from. I think there is a lot of conversation and collaboration, um, but nothing is handed down. Uh, things are are talked through, ideas are bounced off, and it's all with the goal of of getting better. Okay, Julian, right in the middle. With the talk of Julian McWay's the Boston Globe, um, with the talk of sort of the sustainability and kind of trying to remain competitive, with all the questions with the roster and all the movement, how do you? stay competitive competitive within this market where the fan base demands you know excellence yeah that's <clears throat> you know obviously uh you know as i've said and uh there's a lot coming in here about both uh the landscape within and also what our options are going to be you know this coming off season that i don't know and as far as this coming off season there's a lot that we as a group don't know uh before we see uh, what we what paths we might be able to take um, I think a lot of our responsibility as a group is going to be able to is going to be to be creative and to figure out how many different paths potential paths we can construct to accomplish all of our goals. Uh, the more options you have, uh, you know the, the, the better choices you're able to make, and that's a lot of our jobs. Okay. Johnny in the back middle. Yes, um, any John, um, Tom. I am. What the conditions now of sale of Valdi and Price? That I think also falls in the category of you know I just got here and I'm not fully briefed. Um, so you know I know with with all those guys when there's updates uh, we'll give them to you. But uh, I'm waiting for them too. I just just got here. Okay, Alex in the back middle. Uh, Sam, Tom, and John, I'm interested, you know, a, a process where you're searching for leadership outside of the organization represents a chance to gain some perspective on your own organization. What did you learn about where the Red Sox are uh, and any, you know, particularly any areas that you wanted to address as you were going through the search process? Well, it, it was a great opportunity to uh, spend a, uh, an inordinate amount of time uh, with the baseball operations group. Um, John, Tom, and I have been together for 18 years, uh, but we often don't go through transition uh, periods like this. So it was an opportunity to really uh, listen and hear from uh, people that had been here for a long time. I mean, between Rock and Eddie, BOH and Zach, um, you know, five, six decades worth of experience working for the Red Sox. So um, the honesty, the transparency, the candor was striking about where uh, our sort of self-assessment was, uh, where there were some areas uh, for improvement, and the idea that we could uh, have the uh, humility to, to say that we, we wanted to bring in some uh, ideas from another organization that we uh, respect even, it was, even if it was within our own uh, division, um, uh, I think was impressive and uh, will be well served by bringing in some, some new ideas. But let me be very clear, uh, we have men and women in this baseball operations department um, who have uh, delivered four World Series championships, uh, and so we're incredibly grateful for their participation in this process, and they participated in the interview process, uh, which was really important to us. We look at ourselves and we think that we are a very good organization, and as John said, we uh, uh, very much want to be a stable organization, but we all wake up every day saying, how can we improve? Um, a year ago today, we were considered the best uh, baseball club in the world, and um, obviously we didn't achieve our objective this year, but we have the pieces in place to be competitive every year, and we think that, uh, that uh, Haim will uh, lead us uh, back to... Uh, being the best team in baseball. We were not that this year, but we are very hungry to uh, win another world championship. And uh, as I said at the beginning, we feel we have the pieces in place both on the field and off the field to do so. Okay, David in the back. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm, yeah. Uh, David Laurel from uh, Fangraphs. While the Red Sox have a strong analytics department, the Rays arguably have an even stronger and more creative department. 
To what extent do you feel that you're going to be influencing, if not impacting, what Zach Scott and his, his people are doing? You know, throughout my time with the Rays, we always uh, had a lot of respect for what we thought. You know, you never really know what other organizations are doing behind closed doors. Try as you might to find out. We had great respect, uh, you know, for what was going on here. Um, so, you know, I'm expecting as, as I, you know, get my feet on the ground here to, to be impressed. Uh, and I'm sure I will be, and hopefully I'll be able to, to add some new thoughts and ideas that are, that are going to help. Um, but, you know, the respect that I've had uh, for this group's analytical efforts over the years is considerable. Okay. Bill on the front left. Bill Burt from the Eagle Tribune. I have a question for John, but a quick one for Haim. Have you ever had a press conference like this in Tampa? <laughs> have I personally? <laughs> no. This is this is more people than we've usually had in attendance, um, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Not for the game. And a question for John. John, I, I was on the field with a lot of people, Dodger Stadium a year ago, and celebrating and talking about how smart everyone was, and things happen. Uh, in your opinion, what was missing in the organization that led you to bring in Haim? I mean, what, what will he fill? What void that maybe wasn't here? I think the, the most important thing to remember here is that we won a championship with Dave, and Dave was a tremendous general manager, president for this, for this club, and is a Hall of Fame uh, executive. Uh, we differed on how we should move forward and uh, uh, and we decided to make a change. Does that answer your question? It's not good enough. Maybe a little more specific. About why? The broad range of what the client brings. Ah. It's, I wouldn't contrast the two. I would just say that that um, we were extremely desirous of bringing in someone who would um, augment and add, as opposed to just you know bringing in someone who might have been an autocrat, for instance, have a uh, a one man show. One of the things that we were so impressed with Heim was is, and I know we keep talking using this word collaborative, but. That's what it takes to run a successful organization, again, of the size of, the, of, the, of this organization. It's a, it's a tremendously complex organization. On the, on the business side that Sam runs, it's incredibly complex as well. He doesn't do everything himself, obviously. He has a tremendous staff in dealing with community issues, fan issues, political issues. Uh, where, where, as if you look at the field today, there, this is this is a, a major operation. You, it, it's never the work of one person, and in this case, so we were we we heard so much about the about Heim's attributes and his his ability to work with people, his his uh, stature in the industry among his peers. And uh, so that was a major, I think, a major reason. And we also have tremendous respect for the, the Rays organization, what they've accomplished over the last um, dozen years. They have been incredibly competitive with limited resources. They haven't been, they haven't been well supported, but uh, they've done everything right on and off the field. So um, we were. We were eager to bring in some new ideas as well as to uh, buttress what we're doing here presently. Okay, that like enough? <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like we have just a few more with Steve Buckley on the right. Uh, Steve Buckley from The Athletic. If I could direct this at Tom and John, uh, at the beginning of the press conference, I mentioned that the Mookie Betts, the future of Mookie Betts came up during the interview process. Uh, if I could ask... Uh, actually all three of you from the ownership side and management side to speak to that. And as part of your answer, I'd also like to know if a what would you do with Mookie Betts uh, question came up. Well, as, as we've said, what would, uh, what would I do? <laughs> as we've said, uh, we think he's one of the great players 
in baseball, and we would, in a perfect world, like to uh, figure out a way for him to continue to be a, a player for us for, the, for his career. But uh, he had the right to uh, uh, test free agency. We've had conversations with him in the past, and Haim and his group will lead conversations going forward. I could just, if I could just clarify, what I meant was, did, did you gentlemen ask him a what would you do question regarding Mookie Betts? No. No. No, I would say, I would say that we, we talked about that there are a lot of tough decisions to make this offseason. And that's not uncommon um, during off seasons, but there, there are some significant decisions. They're not all in our hands, obviously. Um, the first one will is is not our decision to make, but it will impact it will impact us. Okay, Sean, right in the middle. But it was a ge- more of a general discussion of how we brought up. We talked about Mookie, JD, other issues, but it was not a. We didn't focus on oh what 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 should we do because there you're you're going to be looking at a number of factors, including. Um, where Mookie wants to play for the long term. Sean. Uh, for Sam, Tom, and John, as John just noted, uh, collaborative seems to be the word that comes up more than any other today in terms of your uh, what you were looking for. Um, for any of you, do you think you got away from that in recent years? I'll start. Um, uh, yeah, we can always improve in terms of uh, collaboration, communication, uh, preparation, uh, work ethic. Uh, one of the things that I am and I talked a lot about was we need to be vulnerable and, um, and think about ways each and every day where we can improve. Uh, we've had a lot of success here since 2002. Um, that's, we, we don't, uh, we, we're proud of that success. But we know that if we rest for one minute, uh, we can be passed by, by our competitors. So uh, we need to consistently improve, get better, take the best uh, ideas from other organizations, incorporate them into our own systems and processes. Um, and that's what we plan to do. And that is uh, something that I am spent a lot of time talking about in the interview process, and it was one of the things that really uh, caused us to gravitate towards him. Okay, looks like we have one last. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Please. Han, uh, you have interviewed for a number of similar positions in recent years. A couple last off season. How different was this process from the other handful of uh, jobs that you had sought in the past? Well. You know, coming in here, obviously all your past experiences inform you, um, but I was really solely focused on the Boston Red Sox and uh, whether this was a good fit for everybody. Um, you know, the one thing I said it before, I was really, really pleased and, you know, hopefully, you know, reciprocated it well, just how uh, open and honest and free-flowing the conversation was. Um, and that's important because if we're going to, you know, tackle uh, – you know, some of these tough decisions and do some great things together, the more uh, open we are with each other, the better we're going to be. Okay, last question here. Chris on the right. And, uh, for Haim, um, you guys obviously use the opener a lot in Tampa. Is that more of a product of kind of the personnel you had, or is that in your mind the way this game's going? We, we said it, uh, you know, with the Rays and I and a number of other people, you know, are on record about that, that it was always about just trying to figure out how you could take the strengths of the players that were on your roster and go win as many baseball games as you could. Um, you know, nothing more, nothing less. So, you know, I think in this game now, uh, teams, you know, the more this game evolves, team, teams are being open to uh, a larger menu of options of how to do that. Uh, but there is not necessarily any one right way. It's really just about going into it with a mindset of using uh, everybody's strengths, uh, whichever way is going to give you the best chance to win. This team is, is built on you know starting pitching and the normal kind of way, I guess, of doing it. So is that your expectation that that's how it'll go? I don't know yet. Um, you know, this is something that, again, as we, as we talk, as we work together, we're, we're going to figure out the, the best way to think about things. Uh, you know, certainly we played... Uh, our, our last uh, home stand with the Rays, uh, you know, we we played the Red Sox, and there were a lot of 
a lot of bullpen games and a lot of pitchers being used on both sides. So there's a lot of different ways that this team had been doing it. I don't necessarily think it would be anything new to think about that. But you know, it, it's really just going to come out of our collective discussions. OK, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. That'll conclude the press conference. At this time, I'd like to invite the cameras up for a photo opportunity here. Then after that, we will hold separate availabilities on either side of the podium. First, the TV cameras on my right and writers on the left.